Welcome back to the Marketing Wellness Podcast with Mandy and Roxy, where we share our combined knowledge and experience in the world of marketing, business, and wellness. I'm Mandy Summers, and this is my co-host, Roxanne Ray. We are well-equipped to bring you the latest in marketing and business knowledge. In this episode, we're going to be discussing how email is definitely not dead. We'll also share any links in the show notes to anything that we reference and make sure that you subscribe to our podcast so you never miss an episode. Stick around to the end and you'll get info on how to access our exclusive community where we share advanced trainings and tools to use for marketing your wellness and growing your business. So today, Roxy, let's chat about email. I know you are very passionate about teaching the healthy habits of emailing and how this can really change your business. And I'll be honest, I was not emailing consistently before I hired you back in 2020. And it has literally revolutionized my business. We have grown our list by over 10,000 just in the last few years, um, just from sending emails consistently and leading people to that. So with that, I would love for you to share some of your amazing knowledge on email marketing. Yes. Okay. So I have a ton to say about this and I'll try to keep it concise and distill it down to just the necessary pieces when it comes to email marketing. Number one, I believe every single business owner should be using email to communicate both with their prospects and their customers. There's absolutely no reason in the year 2024 that you should not be emailing and it's absolutely not dead. I can actually give you some statistics to help reinforce this idea that Email is absolutely necessary, okay? So number one is when it comes to your customer list, you can get open rates between 60 to 90%, sometimes 100% when you email your customer list consistently. So I think that's the underlying foundation to all the discussion we're going to have about email is it absolutely has to be on a consistent basis. You cannot just decide, oh, today I'm going to email my whole list and then they don't hear from you for six months. That's not what I'm talking about. You have to email consistently. So with that consistent effort, you can expect between 60 to 90, sometimes 100% open rate. So it's not just the email getting to the inbox, but actually being opened by your list of customers. Which is this- absolutely incredible. That's an yes. incredible rate. Well, especially because if you were to Google, what is an average open rate for an email? Industry-wide, whether it doesn't matter the industry, it's all between 10 to 20%. Do you realize? Okay, so that means 10 to 20 people out of 100 are actually opening your email. That's awful. Versus six to eight people out of 10 opening your email. Like that is where we want to get to. And that's where you absolutely can get to when you're emailing consistently. And so we'll talk about some specifics on what to email and all that, but that's for your customers. Then when it comes to your prospects, the open rate does start to drop a little bit, but you can absolutely expect to get between a 40 to 50% open rate for your prospect emails. And what I mean by prospects are people who download your lead magnet. And so they don't really know you. They're still getting, like you're still nurturing that relationship you can still have a really good open rate on that. And so that is why we are saying email is not dead because this can absolutely reinvigorate your business, number one, where you can nurture prospects to become customers. But then when you're emailing your customers, you can reactivate old customers. You can have them buying more from you than just that initial purchase. And in fact, there's some statistics out there that say, retaining a customer is more valuable than trying to get a new customer. Meaning you make more revenue when you retain your customers, meaning they buy from you over and over and over again, versus trying to go out and get a new customer. It's more expensive to go get that new customer. I love that. So Roxy, if this is a question I get often in our academy, when we start talking about emails, the first question always is, how do I start? And how do I go from not sending emails? And so maybe our listeners are feeling this where they're like, yeah, (laughs) like I have a list. Maybe you've got a couple hundred, a couple thousand on there, but you haven't communicated with them in a year, two years, three years. And a lot of people have that like anxiety of, I'm just going to drop into their email box. Almost like you're, you're dropping in at their house. You're knocking on the door and walking in. 
And so I, I would be curious what you recommend and I know what I recommend, but like, what are, how, what are your recommendations for when somebody is stuck and they're like, I want to start emailing, but how do I actually get that first initial email? Like, what do I put in it? Yeah. Oh, this is a great question. I actually did a whole training class on this in Social Fox on how to revive a dead list essentially is what we're doing. Right. And the, right. Uh, what I mean by dead list is that you just haven't talked to them in a long time and they probably don't even remember that they're on your list. Well, and, so, and I love it that you say dead list because email is dead if you're not emailing it. If you're not totally. utilizing it, it is definitely dead. <laughs> totally. <laughs> totally. So if you're not using email, then I guess Yes, it's dead, but you should be using it because it's alive and well for us who are using it. Absolutely. And so here is number one. If you're deciding I'm going to go in on emailing, I have this list. How am I going to reinvigorate them? Number one, you have to decide as soon as I send that first email, I'm going to continue to be consistent in emailing them week after week and never stop. So don't try to revive your list unless you're prepared to email consistently. So that's number one. Number two would be that that first email. What do you say in it, right? That's the question. That's a million dollar question. What do I say in the email? I like to call the elephant out in the room and just apologize and say, you're on my list and I have dropped the ball. I I told you I was going to email you, you. I told you you were going to hear from me and you haven't. And that's my fault. And I take full responsibility for that. Here's what I, you can expect from me. And just lay it out. I'm going to email you weekly on these topics, right? This is what I share about in my emails, whether it's, you know, is it wellness related? Is it marketing related? Is it a bit like, what is it that you're going to email them? The topics you're going to share with them and then tell them a little bit about you. So you have to build your credibility back up. Who are you and why should they choose to continue to be on your list? And if you do that in a really authentic way, you can really truly start to revive a list of people who are like, oh, I, I, do, I, I don't remember signing up for this list, but these are topics I'm interested in. I really like this person. They've shared a little bit about themselves. I'm going to stay on this list and just see how it goes, right? When you just call it out from the beginning and you even get, and you make it very easy for them to unsubscribe because you do not want people spamming you because that's going to hurt your ability to have those higher open rates when people mark you as spam. So you just lay it, even in the first sentence, I, I would just put in there, I've dropped the ball. I completely understand if you want to unsubscribe from my list and put the link right there because you do not want people to mark you as spam. So don't make it where people are like, oh, what is this crap? Spam. <laughs> right? oh, but you know, the, the, I actually think that's brilliant because some of my best open rates have been like, I messed up. Or just in the last month, I used a Taylor Swift lyric that was like, it's me. Hi, I'm the problem. It's me. I like <laughs> messed up an email. I'd like mess up a link and that got so many open rates. So like, I love it that you're like, call it out because a lot of times I think our insecurities are like, oh, but what if they don't think I'm professional? No, like call it what it is. That actually will resonate better than just like jumping in and they're like, who is this person? And yeah. I, you know, I think personally just saying what it is, they say facts, tell stories, sell. That's a story. Mm-hmm. Like you could, like, that's a story. Like, yeah, hi, you totally signed up at my email list and I dropped the ball and, and maybe even say why, like share a little bit and maybe you're insecure. Maybe you didn't know how, but now you're, you're, you've implemented new systems. Like tell the story so that they feel connected to you. The stories connect them to you. And it humanizes, right? We all want to feel like, Oh, I can empathize with that person. I can relate to that person. They're not perfect. They're doing the best they can because I mean, at the end of the day, even like you're probably looking at us like, Oh, Roxy, man, you guys got it together. Like, trust me, <laughs> we're not per like, no, like nobody on planet earth is perfect. Like, we all make mistakes. We all try our best. And so when you can just share that openly and be just vulnerable, people resonate with that. And they really yeah. like, then they, you might actually have people who have been on your list where if you had been emailing consistently, they probably would have ignored you now paying attention because you've just shared your story with them. Well, and there's also, let's address another huge aspect of why people don't email and that's fear, fear that yes. they're going to screw it up, fear of how people are going to view them, fear that the wrong thing's going to go out, fear that like there's all these things. And what I've learned it like, 
I've had to go from being, that's a perfectionist mindset where it's like, everything has to be perfect before I can send it. And if you're on my list, you know that I'm not that way anymore. And so a lot of times you'll get something from me and you're like, I get, e you know, emails back that are like, Hey, that link didn't work. Or, you know, did you mean to say this or that, or there's a spelling error. And of course I'm trying as hard as I can to be as professional as I can, but I'm also human. And I think that that gives it that relatable side of things. And so like, can I just share a story? I've actually got two of these. I'll share one um, of an email nightmare. Oh no. That happened. I've witnessed many of these, not just from you, but like from other people too. <laughs> well, and so, and I share this because not, you know, I just want you to know that it's better to get things done than not. Um, we set up our email uh, automation to have like, I don't know, five or 10 things going out. So a lot of times when you're building out your, your email system, you can, especially if you're using go high level social Fox, you can go through and say, okay, on this day, send this email this day. And so it's like, you put them into an automation and you don't have to go back and think about it. Mm -hmm. Well, we had dropped 5,000 people into this email sequence, this workflow. And we had like five of the six emails done. And as you know, Roxanne, you can go in and you can edit after you've dropped people in as long as they haven't gone through that email step. And so the intention was we were going to fill out, depending on what had happened that week, we were going to like, because a lot of times I, I like to gauge my audience questions because I do a lot of interaction with live coaching. Um, and it, that email was going to address some of those things. And I just forgot to go in and change it. So when I set it up, the only thing in that email was unsubscribe. Oh my God. With a link. I, I didn't know this is how it happened. So five people or five, 5,000 people got an unsubscribe email. That, that's all it said was unsubscribe. And we had like a hundred people unsubscribe that day which is huge. I mean, I think on our unsubscribe list for that particular list, we maybe have like 250 over the last three years total with that hundred included in there. So, oh my goodness. But, and I had people that were like, are you mad at me? Like what, you know, because it just says like unsubscribe. It's like so blunt. Almost like a demand, like unsubscribe. Yeah, unsubscribe <laughs> now from my list. Like how dare you be on here? But, you know, I sat there and I thought, I actually had some people who messaged back and they were like, thanks. Yeah, I've actually been meaning to unsubscribe. <laughs> it was so funny. Oh, no. But I just thought, and that's okay. It it happens. It totally, like, sometimes things happen and we still have an amazing email list and we laugh about that now. Me and my sales team, we laugh about that. We're like, oh, that was really funny. Remember that day when we had a hundred unsubscribes all at once? That's a good way to clean your list. Yes, totally. <laughs> it was so good. And you know, the thing is, is our unsubscribe actually takes you to a page that says, did you mean to unsubscribe? And, and so we actually did have some resubscribes from that. People followed it and then they're like, I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to. So we kind of had a lot of interaction with this, like tons of emails coming back, which is good for our reputation. Mm -hmm. Not great that we had so many unsubscribes. We had some resubscribes, things like that. So um, I wanted to share that because emailing has brought us millions of dollars in our business. And in, in 2021, 2022, 2023, and now in 2024, like we're on track to have a huge year again. And just this last week, um, our sales staff, we, you know, I run, I run boot camps, and that will front load our sales staff with a lot of appointments. Mm -hmm. But just this week, I hadn't done something. So I, th I put together an email sequence. And from the first one, we started getting appointments. Just from that email, I didn't have to show up live. It was just sending value packed emails. It's like, here's a tip, book an appointment, you know, type of thing. Um, and it's been absolutely incredible because of that. I love, I love that you shared that story of, uh, you know, cause you're right. I know I've talked to so many people. They're afraid to get started 
because they're afraid of people unsubscribing. Like legit, they're, they're afraid that people are going to unsubscribe. And what I always say is if they unsubscribe, they're not your people. Yes. You, like they're not meant for you. They're never going to buy from you. You might as well get them off your list. So you're not worried. Like they're, they're harming your, what I call your domain reputation, your email reputation. I actually call it your email credit score. Yes. Right. So your email credit score is when you send an email, the inboxes, Gmail, Yahoo, Hotmail, all of them, they look and see historically when this, an email comes from this person, do they go into the inbox and do they get opened or do they get marked as spam? Right. Are pe- like, are, it's really, are they being marked as spam or deleted? And so you base, you have a email credit score based on what's happening with the emails that you send out. And so this is why I said from the very beginning, you need to decide if you're an email, you're going to be consistent. Otherwise just yeah. don't start, just don't do it. But knowing that you want to make sure that if people are going to don't want to be on the list, let them unsubscribe because those are the people who are going to mark you as spam or, you know, just not add to your, your reputation, your email credit score, where it's going to, it's going to, it's like a ding on your credit score, right? They checked your credit. And now your, your score went from 750 to 725. Like you just don't want that. And so it's totally okay. Like for you, Mandy, like, honestly, I see that. I was like, oh, you cleaned your list. You didn't have to worry about <laughs> These people want, didn't want to be on your list. Yeah. So don't well, mess up my re- credit score. I remember when um, you were teaching me to email back in 2020 and I had that fear. Like people are going to unsubscribe and you're like, good. I was like, what? You're like, good. They're not your people. And that, that really resonated with me because I was like, yeah, that's true. The people who complain about my emails, they're not my people. Mm-mm. Those are not the people that we want attracting into our business. We want the people who are willing and active and wanting to engage and they are, they find value. Like I was thinking about this last night. We naturally as humans, we're seeking approval. It's just like a natural thing. We, we, we want that approval that people like us and they accept us and that unsubscribe takes that away it's like Mm. it's that instant hit that's like oh my best friend unsubscribed from my list well maybe they unsubscribe because they see you every day and you talk to them about everything in there and they don't feel like they need like it's not up to you to take that unsubscribe and internalize it and put it in your heart and like carry it around with you and hold a grudge I like to think like, I just like what you said, you were like, good. Okay, great. Now we know where we're at. And, and I don't even worry about unsubscribed anymore. It used to like hurt my heart every time. Oh, somebody else unsubscribed. And it's like, no, I don't even like check. Like, why was I checking? Like, why was I checking? No, it's true. Well, you know what? It's, it's, it applies to every, like, okay. What you just said is so true because like in social Fox, for example, We'll have people who are paying customers unsubscribe. And I'm like, do you, do you not want the latest information? Like I just, to me, it says, I don't take it personally more. I take it more of like, what was the thought process behind that? (laughs) Why was that decision made? (laughs) My high ticket coaching program, we have hundreds of students and I have about 30 unsubscribes. And I know that because this week I was going through and I was, we were moving lists and I was like, Wow. I mean, they have lifetime access every week to coaching and that's okay that they've opted out. I'm like, great. That's 30 less people I have to worry about. Right. Well, I mean, if they were not going to open your emails and they were technically affecting your email credit score yeah, by just either being deleted or moved into another like promotions folder or what have you and Gmail. And so I, I want to say something else about unsubscribe too. When it comes to understanding that people are going to unsubscribe. Think about your own behavior when you unsubscribe from someone else's list. It's not a personal thing with them, right? It's not like, oh, I don't like you unsubscribing. It's more of like, that's not for me right now. Like this is overwhelming to me. I can't handle this. This is just something I can't also take on whatever the reason is. So remember, that's the same reason people are unsubscribing from you. It's not a personal thing. It's more of like, it's what is them. It's about them, not about you. So just remember that when you're looking at unsubscribes, I know that's a really big deal for a lot of people. Yeah. And you also have to think like, um, 
management wise, like what can they emotionally and mentally and professionally manage in their life at that time? Like, it's not about you. It's, it's about what they can take in internally. Mm -hmm. Can they, can they be assimilating that information that you're sending them? I I've seen this with my boot camps. Um, I give so much information, like free information. And we have people who are all in and they come to everything and they read every email. And then we have some people who they can, they come to day one and that's all they can handle right now. That's kind of their, their, their grade level, their bandwidth that they can handle in their business. And, and everybody's at a different level. And so the unsubscribe sometimes just means I'm not there. I'm not at the level you're at yet and I can't handle it. Yep. Yep, exactly. So tell me this once we've kind of gotten over the initial, okay, you've now emailed your list and you are now over the fear of unsubscribing. Um, what, what is your recommendation for how to even think about the process of setting up a system to email people consistently? Does that make sense? Cause I think the next step, I'm always thinking like, what's the overwhelm and the overwhelm is, okay, I got that first email out. Now what? Mm, okay. So basically like the plan, like the process, yes. the plan, and then the system to set it up. Okay. So there's actually another email I would send if you're, you're reviving your list after that. And so you send that first one out, but see, here's the thing, because you haven't emailed them in a long time, you're not going to have a high open rate on that. So you're going to have to send another email to, to those people, hopefully that are not opening, will open the next one. And in that one, I like to share testimonials and th you know, th testimonials of you helping people on whatever it is a thing that you're selling, right? So sending that second email to hopefully that first group who opened the email, but also the group who did not open that first email. Then I would send a third final email. Actually, it's not the final one, but a third email that is your story. Here's how I got into this business. Here's just a background story of like what, uh, how I've got to this point in my, in my life. And that's the third email. So hopefully the people on your list have opened one of those three emails. Okay. Yes. And now, okay, now they're engaged, but there's still going to be a group of people who have not opened any of those emails. And he, I, I keep kind of mentioning this list cleaning. This is essentially what you're doing. You're trying to clean this list and get it revived. You're going to send a final email. And in, and in fact, you can build all this out in social box, I actually have it built out for everyone in social box. They can just pop it into their account and apply this I actually wrote out templates and everything to have these emails ready to go. So you're going to have a fourth final email. The people who did not open any of those first three emails, you're essentially going to unsubscribe them, but you're going to send them a final email that says, Hey, I'm removing you from my list. It's clear. You don't want to be here. Totally understand. No hard feelings. Love ya. If you need me, great. I'm here. You can resubscribe at any time. If you want to stay on my list, click here or don't say click here because that's a spam word. Yeah. Say go here or tap here to stay on my list. So they're essentially raising their hand saying, yes, don't, don't unsubscribe me. So if they do not open that email and they do not click that link, you're going to unsubscribe those, that group of people from your list. And now you have a clean list of people that you have committed to yourself. You're going to be consistent in emailing. Now you're going to move them into a, it, I'm thinking in, in workflows here in a separate workflow where you're going to email them on a weekly basis. And here's my suggestion. I would pick a day of the week the same day, same time, every single week that you're going to email, because what you want to do is train the audience to expect to hear from you at that same time, every single week. So that there's no, you're essentially, what you're working on is training your list on what they, so they know what to expect from you. Like these are the type of emails I receive from Mandy, or these are the type of emails I receive from Roxy. And I always receive them on Sunday night, or I always receive them on Tuesday morning, whatever you choose. Again, you need to choose and be consistent. Like you are committing to this. It's like, you're going to, you brush your teeth every night. Like that's a commitment. It's the same thing. Like you're committing to send this email every week. And then when the next question I usually get from that is, okay, what do I write in this email? Like what? Okay. Now, okay. I got them revived. You told me what to write in these first emails. I got them revived. We got the clean list. What do I send them? Well, go back to that first email. What did you tell them you were going to send them? Like the topics you were going to cover. And now you have probably your first eight to 12 emails from those topics you, you shared with them. And what I really like people to do is you're not trying to sell 
outright in your emails. Only occasionally, like once a month or after like three to four emails, will you try to sell them? So if you're someone who's going to email twice a week, then you essentially could sell them every other week, meaning a hard sell email. I'm buy, I'm selling this, go buy, like that kind of email versus more of a story selling email. You're just sharing a story about an experience you had or experience you your customer or client has had and just sharing that in the email. And you're going to do that each week. And these do not have to be long, please. You're not writing a dissertation. You're not writing a blog post. You're not like, this is not a essay, right? Like this is a short email that is just telling a quick little story. And I would even suggest if you're comfortable recording a video for those who like to watch versus read. So you're hitting both types of people. You can put that, e that video in the email and send that off every single week consistently. That is, that's the plan. That's it in a nutshell. I love it. Well, I think it's beautiful. I would say get started. It's time to like jump in, get started, do what you need to do. Um, commit to that, you know, as you were saying, commit, you know, don't do it unless you're willing to commit. I'm like, that's, the, that's what we say every week. All of these <laughs> habits take commitments, right? And that's what will move your needle on the business. And so if you can commit to a month, emailing once a month, do it. If you can commit yes. to once every other week, do it. If you can commit to once a week, please do it. We promise that this is going to move the needle in your business. And if you are like me and you're like, I sit down to write and it's like a blank slate, utilize our AI trainings that we have provided for you in our exclusive community. And if you want access to that, our AI CEO community, you can find that in the links below where we teach you how to use AI to shorten that time. Because for me, it like if I'm going to sit down and write an email from my heart, it's going to take about half a day. But I can take that and I can bullet point it, put it into some of the AI programs and have that done and done, scheduled and sent in less than 30 minutes. That's the goal of the AI CEO is to help you shorten that time that some of these consuming tasks can take. So in my opinion, committing to showing up um, to email is so much easier than it used to, to be because of the AI programs that we have available to us. So we so appreciate you tuning in today. I hope, we hope that you found this podcast helpful today, that it gave you some ideas and, and it also helped you to feel ready to move that needle in your business and start emailing. Just take action and, and commit to that consistency, whatever that looks like for you. Um, remember, if you're interested in the AI community, you can find that in the show, mo show notes or description below. Our goal is to give you back 10 hours of your time each week using AI. And that's what we teach in our AI CEO community. Um, thank you so much for being here. Give this video a thumbs up, click that subscribe button if you liked it, and we will see you in our next podcast. Bye.